Bonjour and welcome everyone. We are now live from Canada, France and Switzerland. Hello to all the teachers, students and everyone else out there watching. My name is Megan and I'm based in EF Educational Tours Toronto office. Thank you so much for joining us today for the final EF digital stage event of the school year. Today we're heading to France to explore a real 365 year old French chateau, Vaux le Vicomte, located just outside of Paris. And our guide today also happens to be the owner of the chateau, the Count de Vaugouet, Monsieur Jean Charles. Together we'll explore the chateau's story past, learn more about how the chateau is used today, and before exploring a few of the rooms together inside. Afterwards, we'll have a glimpse into what it may have been like to live in a chateau with a lesson in etiquette and French table manners. Very exciting. We will meet the Count de Vaugouet in just a moment, but first, I'd like to acknowledge that Toronto is the traditional land of many communities, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. Now, in case you're new to the platform, let me first share some quick tips about Zoom webinar. You will notice that your cameras are automatically turned off and your mics are muted. You will not be able to enable these functions unless we do it for you. You'll notice two buttons for chat and Q&A at the bottom of your screens. Please feel free to use the chat box at any time, introduce yourselves, let us know where you're watching from, how many of you might be watching and what you're most excited to learn about today. If you have any questions for Jean Charles in France at any time, please type them into the Q&A box. And if you have a working microphone, please let us know if you'd like to ask your question live. And then we'll allow you to unmute yourself so that you can do so. My colleagues, Laura and Clementine, will be monitoring both the chat and Q&A for us throughout the session. We should have about 10 minutes at the end to get through your questions. But if you do have a question live during the etiquette lesson we're gonna do later on, type it in there and we'll do our best to answer it live. If you have any, uh, other questions, just pop them in the box. Okay, so I think that's enough from me. Let's throw it over to Jean Charles. Thanks again for being here with us today, joining us from your beautiful home, the Chateau de Vaux le Vicomte. Hi Jean Charles, tell us a bit about yourself and Vaux le Vicomte. Bonjour, bonjour to everyone. Uh, I am Jean Charles de Vaux -Guet. So I am very happy to welcome you today at Vaux le Vicomte. Uh, I am uh, the owner with my two brothers of this uh, beautiful chateau just outside of Paris. It's been uh, the story of a, of a fight between the King Louis XIV and the finance minister Nicolas Fouquet. And uh, today it's been in my family since uh, 150 years. And we have more than 300,000 visitors per year and have many events throughout the year. So I'm happy to present uh, Volvic Home through a video and then we'll come back to this class together. Great. Okay, without further ado, are we ready? Let's cross the ocean over to France, just 60 kilometers south of Paris. We'll start by learning about the Chateau's history, how the castle is used today, and take a quick tour of a few of the state rooms. Ready? Let's go. So welcome to Volvicomte. Uh, this, the story of this chateau is really the origin of Versailles Palace. The chateau has been built by Nicolas Fouquet, who was the finance minister of the king, King Louis XIV. Fouquet is 46 years old. The king is a very young king, only 23 years old with not so much of experience. And Fouquet is very powerful. He decides to build this chateau with the best artists of the time, which are Le Vaux for the architecture, Le Brun for the painting and decoration, and Le Nôtre for the gardens, the first French style gardens of the French history. Of course, Nicolas Fouquet would spend a lot of money to, to, spend, uh, to, to build this chateau, and the king would be very jealous to see the power of Nicolas Fouquet at the time and the beautiful chateau, very modern chateau for the time, being built at the time. Another man called Colbert would be also very jealous. He wants the same position as Nicolas Fouquet. They all fight for the same position as prime minister of the time. And uh, Colbert, being very jealous, will influence the king, maybe saying that he stole the money from the state to build the chateau. Fouquet has been very successful in his, as, in his job, very powerful, 
having the most beautiful chateau of Europe at the time, Versailles does not, does not exist, and the king will believe Colbert. He will maybe believe that he stole the money from the state. And when Fouquet gives his famous party of August 17, 1661, the king is going to be amazed by the beautiful party, by the beautiful chateau, the beautiful gardens, all those all this water, all those fountains, the fireworks, and all the party. He wants to have Nicolas Fouquet arrested on the spot during the party, but his mother, the queen mother, uh, will say, no, you can't do that to your host. So guess what? The king, Louis XIV, will wait three weeks later, on September 5th, to have Nicolas Fouquet arrested. And, Nick, and September 5th is the anniversary, the birthday of, of Louis XIV. So he's offering himself his birthday present, Nicolas Fouquet. There will be a long trial when, where Colbert and the king will choose the, the judges in order to have Fouquet condemned to the death penalty. But even with that, Fouquet will defend himself and the judges will not obey to the orders of the king. If the only time the French when the king will decide to change that into prison for life. Therefore, Fouquet will stay in jail for 20 years and will die in jail. After the arrestation of Nicolas Fouquet, the king will take the same artist who built Le Vicomte, Le Brun, Le Vau, and Le Nôtre, and will ask them to start building another chateau, bigger, maybe nicer, and it's called Versailles. A few centuries later, uh, the chateau will change hands with different families, and my family comes in 1875. Alfred Saumier is my ancestor and he will buy the chateau at an auction sale. He will be the only bidder to come and to buy the chateau. He will spend a lot of money to restore the chateau and then his son will spend even more money to restore the gardens. They both really saved the house from destruction. In 1967, my father received the chateau as a wedding gift and uh, with his wife, they both decided to open the chateau to the public and now we have only about 300,000 visitors per year. Uh, we are now the three sons running the chateau and uh, offering to our visitors many different experiences from uh, Easter with um, a major egg hunt, candlelight evenings, dining, private, private events, weddings and Christmas decorations. This is the first stately room of the chateau that you visit and you are welcomed by Nicolas Fouquet. Nicolas Fouquet, of course, is the man of Volvicomte. He's the one who ordered uh, the construction of the chateau uh, with the best artists of the time, Le Vau, Le Brun and Le Nôtre. And uh, here in this room, it's decorated like in the 17th century, in the beginning of the 17th century. Later, in the other rooms, you will see an evolution of the decoration of the different rooms. But basically here, we have beams on the ceiling, we have tapestries on the side. Tapestries are here to decorate the chateau, but also to isolate the walls from the cold outside. And a big, um, big table here from the 17th century in marble. And those tables never quit the chateau. A lot of furniture disappeared after Nicolas Fouquet got arrested, but those two tables remain since Nicolas Fouquet. This is the first map designed by the architect Le Vau, 
and given to Nicolas Fouquet. Nicolas Fouquet accepted it, except that the red stone here, the bricks, he thought that maybe it was not enough, uh, good enough for the chateau, uh, so he decided to put it in the art buildings, and he, so he kept for the chateau only, only the white stone. And on the back of this map, you have the signature, the original signature of Levaux and Fouquet. This room is called the Salon des Muses. It's one of the most beautiful rooms of the chateau. It's the place where Nicolas Fouquet was receiving his guests. Uh, so they were coming from the entrance of the chateau, waiting in the waiting room, which is the antechamber, and then coming in this room to be received by Nicolas Fouquet. We got wonderful and really beautiful paintings on the ceiling and it's a new method of painting it's new, a new method of showing paintings on the ceiling you don't have beams anymore it's just a lot of plaster where you you can have the the space to paint and to tell stories and at the time the people were educated enough to read to look at the ceiling and to read the messages on the ceiling uh, to understand which stories they've been told so here, the story that is, that is being told to the visitors is how faithful Nicolas Fouquet has been during the civil war in the beginning of the 17th century. He's been very faithful to the royal family. But a few years later, the king will not remember that. So here at Volvicon, Nicolas Fouquet wanted to make this house the house of uh, all the artists. And in the ceiling, you can see a pair of muses on each corner. And the muses are here to inspire the artists. That are here at Volvicont. On the ceiling in the center um, it's the muse of the history and she's got uh, two symbols in her arms. Uh, it's the key and the dog and those two symbols are representing the, the fidelity. So it, just by those two symbols, the two, two objects or the dogs and the key, the visitors can understand the story about the faithfulness of Nicolas Fouquet towards the royal family. Behind me, you've got exceptional furniture from the 17th century, and especially those two commode mazarines. They are from the 17th century. They are made by Boulle. It's an artisan from the 17th century making a very specific uh, furniture like this. Uh, it's really exceptional. It's a lot of value. And you have, when, you want, when you have this, you want to show it to your visitors to show how important you are because it's very wealthy. Above us, we've got another beautiful ceiling painted by Lebrun. And here there's a hint um, showed by Lebrun to Nicolas Fouquet, where you can see the squirrel, the emblem of Nicolas Fouquet. And just behind him, there's a, the, the, um, the snake, the emblem of Colbert. So maybe Lebrun is already telling Fouquet, be careful of the snake, be careful of Colbert. He's jealous of you and it's going to maybe do something wrong towards you. This is the antechamber. So you are coming here before being invited in the next room where Nicolas Fouquet is waiting for you. And here again, we are telling a story, another, another story to the visitors. We are telling the story of the power and the force of Nicolas Fouquet. And to tell the story of the power and the force, nobody is better than the god Hercules. Hercules is representing the, the power and the force. So that's why he is represented everywhere here in this room, in the corners of the, of the ceiling and also in the center where he's arriving on his shah to heaven. Now we are in the antechamber of the king because uh, Nicolas Fouquet wanted to dedicate uh, three rooms for the king just in case he was coming by. He did come by twice um, and because in every chateau when the king was passing by you needed to book for him the best room you have. So Fouquet did three rooms, antechamber, 
a bedroom and a cabinet. We are in the antechamber, which is now dedicated as a library. And we have very nice furniture with the bureau boule again. And I'm going to show you something on this tapestry over there. So on this tapestry, which is called a portière because, it, because it's hiding a, a door behind it, you recognize the emblema of Nicolas Fouquet, the squirrel. But the nice thing, the fun thing, thing about this tapestry is that the scroll was not the original design on this tapestry. And you can see the original design on the back of it. I'm going to show it to you. And on the back of it, you can recognize the snake, the emblem of Colbert. So it's really my dad who had fun with this tapestry because he didn't want to see Colbert on this tapestry, so he put the scroll on top of the, of the snake. So now we have the squirrel of Nicolas Fouquet instead of the snake of Colbert. And now you are in the king chamber where the king was supposed to sleep at the end of the famous party given by Nicolas Fouquet on August 17, 1661. But the king was so jealous that he didn't sleep here. He went back to Fontainebleau and uh, the king decided to have Nicolas Fouquet arrested three weeks after the party. If you have been to Versailles, you can tell that this room is very similar to the one, the King Chamber in Versailles. But this one has been done 20 years before. That's why Vaux le Vicomte is really told as the origin of Versailles. Everything has been built here, created by the best artist of the, of the time, 20 years before Versailles. And then the King took the same artist to build Versailles. So we, we couldn't really see today the Grand Salon because it's being uh, completely uh, restored uh, with lots of scarf holdings. But this is the project designed by Lebrun to be on the ceiling of the, of the Grand Salon. And this is the, 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 the painting called the Palace of the Sun because you've got the sun in the center and the sun is supposed to be representing Nicolas Fouquet uh, here which is ruling the world and here all the persons that are, that are representing here are representing the months, the seasons and the year. And on the sculptures that you saw, you can see that the zodiac signs on each sculptures. So the sculptures are related to this ceiling with uh, all the astrologic signs and the months and the seasons ruling by the sun, ruling by Nicolas Fouquet. You can tell the ego of Nicolas Fouquet that was in the center of the world here and maybe that's one of the big mistakes of Nicolas Fouquet uh, to show his ego to the king uh, that didn't accept it. And just before going in, uh, to the basement uh, to see the kitchens, we are now in the dining room and this was the first dining room created by Nicolas Fouquet where he wanted to have his meals because before the meals were brought wherever the guests were in the different rooms but Nicolas Fouquet wanted want to change that and to have uh, the meals in this room. Unfortunately we, we don't see the table right now because we are re-preparing the opening of the chateau for next week but normally you get a very nice table dressed here uh, for, to show the meals uh, that are in this room. And uh, now we are in the kitchen in the basement of the chateau it's the kitchen of Vatel. Vatel was the famous chef of Nicolas Fouquet. Uh, he was the one making all the, all the parties for Nicolas Fouquet and organizing all the events. And everything was coming from here, from the basement, to go in the different rooms upstairs where the guests were. Um, then Vatel, uh, you should see the movie Vatel, who has been, which has been shot also at Boulevard. Uh, because it's an interesting story of this famous chef who killed himself uh, a few years later in the other chateau of Chantilly. 
Well, we've been through the main rooms of the chateau. Of course, there's many other rooms to visit, especially on the second floor with the private apartments of Nicolas Fouquet. But now it's time to go to our famous French etiquette class. So thank you for listening to this visit and uh, we hope to see you soon in France and at Volvicomte. Wow, what a great tour. What a beautiful place. I can't wait to go visit. It's also really interesting that that uh, Chateau de Volubicon has such close ties with Versailles Palace and Louis XIV. Very interesting. So with that, I think it's time for us to learn about some etiquette, just in case we're invited to dinner at Volubicon anytime soon. Jean Charles, why don't you start us off by telling us a little bit about the history of etiquette in France and what we'll learn about today. Well, the Can you hear me? Yep, we can't see you. Need your video back on. Okay. There we go. <laughs> so the, the, the etiquette is really a, a French way of living. Uh, it's been there for, for years and, and centuries. It's just a way of living together, of good manners, not only at the table, but like the day-to-day -day, uh, good manners between uh, ourselves. And uh, it's part of the French culture since uh, centuries. So uh, we decided to do this French etiquette at Volvicons because we are a French chateau. We are uh, an aristocrat family and uh, it's part of our education. Uh, we thought that it could be interesting to teach that to some students, but only also visitors, foreigners, but also the French, uh, French tourists. Because now uh, with the new generations, uh, some are missing the the good manners uh, around the table or even uh, during the everyday life. And um, so we decided to do this class in the outbuilding. So we are not in the main chateau, in the main building of the chateau, because uh, here we have the internet access. So it's easier for, for you to listen and, and to understand uh, this class. And it's also here that we do those classes um, because at, uh, inside the chateau, uh, of course, the decoration is very different as you saw in the video, but uh, the tourists are, and the visitors are going through those rooms. So it's easier for, to do that here instead of the, the main palace. Great, that's really cool. Maybe some groups will get to do it sometime. <laughs> okay, should we get started? What's next? So Anne, She's going to be the, our teacher today. Uh, she's going to teach uh, us and you uh, the etiquette uh, class. So let's get started if you want. Great. So hello to everyone. I'm very happy to welcome you in France. So my name is Anne. And I guess there are plenty of young teenagers watching you right now. So. We are very, very happy to welcome you for this uh, uh, presentation of the French way we do dinners. And maybe all of your teenagers are asking right now, well, how does it affect me? You know, I'm young, I'm living very far, I'm living in Canada and, you know, but you know, you never know what life will bring you as a surprise uh, because you might be growing uh, and having a job where you have to travel and you have business dinners or, or who knows, maybe you will come to France and Jean-Charles will invite you at his table, you never know. So it's very good to have uh, some uh, uh, essential information on how to be behave uh, in such a dinner as the one you will right now see when uh, all our guests will sit down. So the French art of receiving the French etiquette, you know, it really has to do with beauty and searching of harmony and searching of, of, um, of elegance. And that's why we do tables uh, 
very beautiful, like this table. I don't know if you young people, when you go to have dinner at your grandma and she's preparing such a table, or maybe you prepare that table for your mom when she comes back from work. But as for us French people, we like to do it because this is our culture and our heritage. And it comes far from the 17th century. And Louis XIV was very strong, you know, in very, uh, um, um, very um, uh, um, interested in making the gast French gastronomy and the French table become an art, just like music and, and architecture. The gastronomy became an art and it was very important, not only the taste, but also the display of the table and the table had to be beautiful. So uh, the French etiquette talks about beauty, elegance, harmony, harmony in shapes, in colors, but also harmony in relations. And that's why we also will give you some, uh, some tips on how to behave in such a dinner as this. So you can be at ease anytime in your life. That's our, our main goal, yes. So we will talk about the beauty of the table, we will talk about the manners and behaviors, and we will, we will also talk about the specific dress codes, you know, the way you have to come dressed if you are invited in such a dinner, and this is really important, and also the rules of the table, how you make the service. So let's pretend we have, uh, we have been invited in a French family um, at Jean Charles' home, why not? And so uh, we will be invited by um, Anne-Sophie and Jean-Charles for a beautiful dinner. And so um, we will see how we do that. So just one thing before we go on, you know, in France, um, we like to keep traditions. And one of our tradition is that we like to do the meals all together. You know, it's not just you go to the fridge and you take whatever you want, and then you go to on, on the sofa and watch TV, and the mom is just uh, sitting alone in the kitchen. No, when we have lunch time, uh, I want my children to come around the table. We do all eat the same thing, you know, what I have prepared. And we like to preserve that tradition to have dinner and lunches all together. And when you are invited, when we invite for a dinner, elegant dinner, like this one, the hostess might send you, will send you like an invitation and a card, and she will invite you for a specific dinner. And on that card also, you will have a little information written. Don't miss young people that information because that information is the dress card. And the dress code is also very important when you come to this dinner in the French uh, etiquette. Because if the dress code mentions, for instance, something like a uh, black tie only, and you come with your beautiful blue jean that you paid $500, of course, but you will really feel not good because the dress code won't be respected. So, and Sophie will send a card and maybe she will put the dress card. We have four major dress cards and uh, you will respect that and you will come um, for, for the dinner, um, uh, ask for the invitation. So uh, our, our um, dinner times are divided in three uh, periods. When the guests arrive, first of all, we have what we say start uh, the, the starters before the dinner. We go half an hour in the living room and we have some wine and some drinkings and some little things to eat. Then the hostess will call us to come to the table and we will talk about that more specifically in a few minutes. And we have the dinner and our dinner is also divided in several meals. And so this is really interesting. You know, our uh, French dinner is so precious that it has been classified as a, um, as a heritage of mankind by UNESCO in 2010. Wow. Heritage. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The way we do dinner, the way we divide the dinner in, uh, in three periods and the dinner itself 
uh, several meals. We have four different meals. When we come, we have a, like a first meal. Then the, we have the main meal with meat or fish. And then we have cheese. You know, we have plenty of cheese in France. Do you know how many cheese we have in France? <laughs> You know. Hundreds. <laughs> there must be thousands. Do you know how many? <laughs> well, if the young people try to guess right now, we have more than 1,200 cheese in France. Wow. I don't know if anybody tested all of them. But, <laughs> so we have the cheese and then we have the dessert. And when the beautiful dinner is finished, the hostess will invite you to go back to the living room to have the after dinner. So, uh, but tonight we'll talk specifically about the main dinner. Okay, so you ready? You want to know more about it? I think so, yeah. yep. <laughs> okay, so I will just move a little bit. I will try to go there. Don't stop watching me, okay? <laughs> and who's everybody that's with us today? Okay, so can you hear me from here? Yes, we can yeah. hear you great. Okay. Okay, so let's say the hostess now says, now we start to come for, for the dinner. Please, would you come and have dinner? Everybody stands up. And for this dinner, we have Jean-Charles and Anne-Sophie who invited us. And they invited two couples. We have Caroline and Cédric. And we have Patty and another Caroline. We like the, the name Caroline in France. <laughs> so uh, we are six people here. And uh, so if you would just come maybe a little bit closer. Thank you. So this is Anne Sophie. And uh, if, when you are invited in such a dinner, you don't just come to the table and say, oh, okay, come, Joe, sit, come to me, next to me. And you just, you know, you sit down and you choose your place and whatever. No, you don't do that. Please don't do that. You have to wait. You have to wait during all the evening for signals. And who will be the main person that will give you the signals? Of course, the hostess. She will give all the signals. So the, 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 the rule is in such a table, you don't sit wherever you want. Uh, either the hostess will tell you where you have to sit down or you have some little cards with your name on it. But the rule is, Anne Sophie should sit maybe here, let's say, if you should come closer, and Jean Charles has to sit on the other side of the table over here. Hmm. Thank you. And then the rule is, uh, there is always, uh, um, you want to give honor to certain people, good friends, foreigners, and uh, some people in position, but also you give honor, for instance, most um, of the time to the ladies. So the most honored place uh, is given to a woman, a lady, and the place to sit for that lady is specific, it's not anywhere. It's written, it's a code. So the first honored people is a lady and the place is right on, on the right of Jean Charles. So for this dinner, it will be Caroline and she will be normally, what I'm doing here, Anne Sophie would do it, okay? The hostess. But now I'm just talking a lot, so you just... <laughs> so, and the husband of Caroline, should sit on the right of Anne Sophie. So here, a handsome man huh? sitting here. <laughs> the second honoring place is again for a lady. Guys, can you hear that? Please listen. Always give honor to the girls. It's a good, um, it's a good habit. Okay. <laughs> so the second honored place is for another lady, Caroline, another Caroline, on the left of Jean Charles. And her husband is, is sitting on the left of Cavalry, of Anne Sophie, sorry. So now we are ready to sit down, but have you noticed they have not sit yet? They're still standing. Maybe you know why they are standing? 
because they had not received the signal. And who should give the sign? You can see down now. It's the hostess. She will sit the first one, and then everybody is allowed to sit. But listen to that, guys. First, before everybody sits, all the men help the ladies on the right to sit. They will pull the chair, and the lady will sit, and they will help her. Doesn't mean she cannot do it by herself, of course. But it's just a way to, to be um, um, polite and nice. So now all the men will help the ladies to sit and they will all sit down. Would you do that? And I have to remember to tell my husband about this. Well, next time you go to McDonald's, you know how you have to do, okay? Right. So, well, look at this table. I, I, I don't know if you can see it very good, if it's clear on your computer, um, but I don't know if you like it, first of all. Maybe look at it. Always a nice decoration. We have a tablecloth, and we have some nice flowers in the middle, and maybe I can show you we have plenty of glasses. So you will wonder maybe, wow, what glass should I use? Uh, well, it's not very difficult. The big glass is for the water. The middle glass is for the uh, um, uh, red wine. And the small glass is for the white wine. And then also have this, and you know this, maybe you can see it. Champagne. Good, good answer. We know the people that have some uh, good taste. So champagne. And then you have plenty of uh, uh, cutlery, the forks, the knife. You have plenty of them. I don't know if you can see it, but there are three on this side, three on this side, and three on this side. And I said at the beginning, you never know what life will bring to you, where you will go. Um, what will be your job? What kind of uh, um, uh, dinners you will have to attend to? So the more you know and the more at ease you will be in all circumstances. So how should we eat? What should we use? Which cutler cutlery first? I have difficulty with that word. Les couverts en français. Maybe we can also talk French a little bit. So Yes, definitely also at the same time learn French. So the cutlery, well, there's a simple rule, guys. First of all, if you don't know what to do, I give you a tip, a little secret. You just look very, um, um, you just look at what the hostess is doing and you just do what she does. Uh, uh, but the rule is you go from outside to inside. That means the first spoon here is for the first um, uh, dish and then you have a fork and the first knife that will be for the fish and then you have another fork with another knife that will be for the meat and I don't know if you can see it, but you have also cutlery here. You have a fork, a, a knife on the, um, the top of the plates. So what this knife is for? Somebody has an idea? Butter, Ooh. bread? The bread. Never used no. the bread, but we will talk about it. But oh, okay. what? what about cheese? Wow. This oh, is, le fromage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the cheese. And then you have a little fork here on the top of the plate. Somebody knows for the use of the fork? Mm. <laughs> Dessert, maybe? Dessert, yeah. Dessert, very good. Even the, they say, listen, they say even the ice cream. Oh. I don't know what to do to eat the ice cream with the fork, but that's the rule, okay? And then there's finally another little spoon for the 
end of the ice, of the ice cream to finish it. Uh, you have a little plate with the bread on the left side. One rule, guys, you never bite the bread with your, like this. Never. You break, break, break the bread. Tear, tear. Okay, you break the bread with your hands. You never do it with your uh, teeth, okay? Ah. And so we'll talk about the good manners a little bit, a little bit um, later, but the bread is here. Okay, so this is a beautiful table. So um, how do we serve the food? Are you still with me? Yep, yep. Everybody? Okay, I cannot see you, some of the young people over there, so it's quite uh, confusing, but I imagine you are very concerned uh, concentrated and very uh, interested because next year if you come to France you just want to be invited in such a atmosphere and test what you have what you are now listening so how do we serve the food uh, Caroline will be doing the service she will be standing I'm Sophie I'm sorry I'm Sophie I'm Sophie will be doing the service the hostess and uh, she will be standing and bringing the, the plates and the dishes and she will come and I will just show you how she will do it, okay? Very quickly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. She stands up. I have noticed they, they have not touched anything on the table yet. I mean, they are not trying to arrange the flowers or changing the cutlery or, you know, touching the bread or they don't even do like a, a butter on the bread because you, they're so hungry, you know? No, they touch nothing because they're waiting for the signal. And you know now who gives the signal? A <laughs> <The> hostess. <laughs> so, uh, she will come with the plate, the, 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 the dish, and she will come and she will present to the, to the guests and she will come by the left side and you can guess to whom she will present the dish first. Hmm. Ooh, that's a good I question. Don't know. Who could it be? Sorry? The, a lady, I'm sure, first. Oh, good. The, 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 main, um, uh, the main honored guest, which is a lady, who is a lady, and the lady is on the right side of Jean Charles. So Anne Sophie will come and she will bring the plate. She will come here on the side. Can you still see me? Yeah. yeah. See me on my face. <laughs> <laughs> and she will present and Caroline will serve herself. Okay? And you can do it. Well, and then Jean Charles is holding and holding for the next lady on this side. She helps herself. Then she holds for Jean Charles, who served himself. Are you still with me? Yeah. Yes, you're with me? Okay. And it's going to turn. And then Caroline will give it to uh, Patrick. No, and Patrick, I'm sorry for Patrick, he is not still, he, he needs to review. Patrick won't serve himself because first, ladies, guys, are you here? Yep. Mm. Okay. So yes. you will just hold the plate for Anne Sophie and she helps herself. Okay. When she finishes, she holds for him and she does the same. You see, and it turns like this, always respecting the rules, the woman and the ladies are honored and are served first. When, when you finish, he helps himself. No, she holds. You hold for him, okay? And then Kathleen will bring back to the plate to the uh, and Sophie to the kitchen. Hmm. Can you do it? Can you do it? Okay. And <laughs> you notice nobody has put the um, has started eating. Kathleen will take the um, and Sophie <laughs> the napkin. And this is the signal, you can do the same. You take the napkin, and of course, 
you don't open the napkin, you know, like, you know, like this. Uh, wow. Like this. <laughs> like this, you know. Uh, you know. Nice scarf. Open, yeah. um, half of it. You see? Ah. Yes, and you, and you put on the knees. Okay, and then Anne Sophie will start eating, and the signal is given you can start eating too. You don't start eating before the hostess gives the signal. Okay. When, when you're, can I ask a quick question? We had a question that came from uh, Sophie. Where should your hands be when you're not eating? Should they be on the table, on your lap? Yes, so it's a good question. Regarding the behavior and where you put your hands, there are several rules. Um, you never put your elbows on the table, oh. even if you're tired, even if, if you have just finished your math homework, you know, <laughs> just tired. No, you put only this part of the body on the table. Your hands have to be like this. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Or you can cross your hands or put your hands on your knees, but uh, you, you don't put your elbows on, on the table. So this is part of the manners. Interesting. Another question? I think that's all the questions for now. Oh. We can keep going, yep. Um, well, while we are talking about good manners, what do we do with our smartphones? <gasps> mm, good question. Good question, don't you think? You know the ones that, that are uh, stuck with the hand of our young people, you know? <laughs> yes, an <laughs> appendage. With a smartphone? Well, yep. the young people, if you come to such a dinner, you have to separate yourself with your smartphone. I'm so sorry, this is really difficult, but you have to do it. No phones on the table, never. Well, no phones on your knees. Not even hidden. Mm. <laughs> I know some people that kind of do that, you know, not on the, phone, on the knees. No, you keep the phone in the bag, in the kitchen, because this is a time out of time. This is a time, a special time, where we are looking for harmony, for good relations, and we don't want that phone to disturb us. So, no phones. So, um, about the behaviors. How do you hold yourself? How do you sit, you know? It's also very important in the etiquette and the behaviors, the manner you sit down. You cannot, you know, go back and forth, you know, put your, your foot on the table or, I don't know, uh, you know, just move. You have to, yes, you have to stay some people say like if you had a cat in behind the back and <laughs> the cat on your knees, you are straight and, um, and your hands on the table. Okay, good. Good, good. We have another question. Um, when is it okay to drink your water? Is it at any time you're allowed to drink your water or? Yes, well, um, when you start eating and Kaborin gives, uh, Anne Sophie gives the signal, well, of course, you can touch anything. The, normally, the, the glass of water is already filled when you sit down on the table. Uh -huh. And another thing to know um, regarding the drinkings, the wine and the water, and uh, the girls never um, serve themselves. They, they like to be treated like queens, and the man is supposed to serve the ladies. So if uh, Jean-Charles or Patrick sees Caroline has no more water, it's his duty to take care of her and put water or wine or anything in her, in her glass. Oh, mm -hmm. What a gentleman. I love that manners. Don't you like it? <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Right now, I, I, I enjoy this time. <laughs> um, what if you have to go out of the table for the bathroom, for instance? How do you do that? First of all, you don't go just like this anytime. You try to 
to stay, don't do it too often, but if you have to go out, well, of course you excuse yourself, and then what do you do with the uh, tablecloth? Uh -huh. The napkin. Uh -huh. um, you just stand and you don't put that dirty napkin on the table because, you know, it's not really elegant for Patrick if Caroline uh, put the napkin just here. So she stands up. Can you stand up? And she puts the napkin on the chair. She goes to the bathroom. Okay. And she comes back. And she... And of course, Patrick, because he's very uh, uh, elegant man, he will help her to sit down again. He won't let the lady sit down by herself. Don't you like that? Très gentil. <laughs> so, um, some rules about the cutlery. 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 Good. <laughs> Les couverts, les couverts. So the forks and the knives. The rule is you are supposed to use most, most of the time in the dinner the fork, not the knife. The knife is only there to cut the meat, but then most of the time you use, use the fork, you cut the vegetables with the fork, mainly use your fork. If you have to push the food in the fork, you don't use the knife. You take a piece of bread, you don't bite, you break it. You take a piece of bread and you push the food with the bread on the fork. You use the bread as a help. And that little piece of bread you don't eat, you put on the left side of your plate and you leave it over there. Also, imagine you have just, Anne-Sophie has prepared a delicious bourguignon, beurre bourguignon. Mm, yeah. And the sauce is so delicious, you know, and you just, you love it. And, 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 and you have some sauce that is on the plate and you really want it so much. So you want to finish with your bread. You don't do that. You don't sauce your plate. You, oh. I'm sorry, but you leave the sauce in the plate. Uh, no, oh, okay. Um, we're, we're close to, we have about five minutes left. So uh, for those of you who do need to uh, get going, please feel free to do so. But for those of you who can stick around a little bit longer, maybe we can have you for a few extra minutes. Sure. Uh, yeah, okay, great. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, towards the end of the meal, uh, what would be different and, and how do we know that the end of the meal is approaching? Uh, how do we know? Okay, well, I said that um, sooner the, the, the meal, uh, the dinner is divided, several dishes. And when we have the, finally, and Sophie will bring the dessert and we have all enjoyed good dessert. And then Anne Sophie again will say, well, now at the end of the dinner, well, now maybe I would invite you to come and finish this beautiful evening for the after dinner. Okay? And then she will invite everyone to stand up and go to the living room. And then you will serve the tea, coffee, and some chocolates or some alcohols. And um, this is the rule. Of course, if the dinner is really, really enjoy, everyone enjoying himself, you can have the coffee and the tea at the table. But normally, this is what uh, he's supposed to do. Um, as also, so, um, um, just before I finish, uh, I, will, I will finish how we finish the dinner. But first of all, there are also some topics in the code you don't talk too much about. Three major topics. Maybe you can uh, guess what kind of topics you avoid. Mm. I have a feeling I know what this might be. Yeah. Could politics? It be, yeah, could it be politics, religion, and money? You saw, it's not good. It's 
<laughs> I think I, I think I'm ready for dinner with you folks. <laughs> you know, this, is, this is the a few rule, but now everything is um, moving and changing in France too. So some of these subjects, um, people want to talk about them anytime. But in the rule, in the code, you should not talk about topics that could bring some uh, um, uh, conflicts in the table among the, the, the guests, you know? So we have a great question here too. Um, towards the end of the meal, should you finish off your entire plate or is it polite to leave a few bites of food? Um, well, you don't have to especially leave some food to be polite. Okay. But you don't have to finish everything. If you, 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 you cannot. If you want, also the hostess uh, will present the plates a second time and two people have to serve themselves um, the second time, the hostess and the main um, uh, guest, um, uh, honored guest, the lady at the right of Jean Charles. Um, yes, it's, to, it's just to show that it's good and it's just a way to be polite. Yes, a good cooker. <laughs> so uh, when everything is finished, the, 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 the dinner was really delicious. And Anne-Sophie will say, now, please, would you, I invite you, we will go and finish the, the evening in the living room for the after dinner. She will stand up and every man will help the lady on the right, pulling the chair. So she stands up. So you help her, you help here. You help the ladies. Yes. And what do they do with the napkin? Um, tablecloth. Napkins. Yeah. <laughs> what do Where they do? We, do they that's a good, yeah. You know, as like this, you know, and they try to make it very polite. Mm. Nice like it was when they arrived because they want to come back tomorrow night. <laughs> or maybe they, what do they do? Well, they, this time they don't put on the chair, they take the napkin and they put it not um, nicely, but just like this, on the left side of the plate before they leave, that's all. Huh. Okay? Okay. And, uh, and they all will go and uh, finish this beautiful evening. When you, if you are invited in such a beautiful French way of doing dinner, there is one very important thing to do in the etiquette. And this is universal. It's everywhere, I think. It's important even though in Canada. It's important to be grateful. And it's important three days or the day after you make a call, you write a little note, you don't forget to say thank you. It was great. I enjoyed the Boeuf Bourguignon. Thank you for the wine, Jean-Charles. It was <laughs> excellent. And you just express your gratitude because expressing the gratitude is part of uh, a beautiful way of living life. Ah, and on that note, actually, that's a perfect segue <laughs> to say, we want to say thank you. I know some people have to shoot off now. We're at 1230. Um, but before you go, we just want to say thank you so much to everyone, Anne and everybody, uh, Jean-Charles, for showing us your home and this wonderful etiquette lesson. Um, thank you again for joining us for our last EF Digital Stage event of the school year and for traveling with us digitally from your classroom and your home. We can't wait to see you again next year. Uh, until then, we'll send an email tomorrow with the recording of the session and also uh, an invite for the teachers out there to join us for some travel trivia on June 17th. Uh, thank you so much again, Jean-Charles, for this special experience. And remember, if you want to see the Chateau de vaux le in France yourself, don't forget to check out our educational tours that visit France on eftours.ca. In fact, I highly recommend you take a look at this one we're going to put in the chat box, uh, Paris and the Chateau tour, which uh, is very uh, related to what we were talking about today. Thanks so much again to Jean-Charles and everybody. Au revoir. 
Bon été à tous. Have a good summer. And if you would like to ask a few more questions to Jean-Charles, he said he would stick around with us for another 15 minutes. So if you do have a question for Jean-Charles, just stay with us. Thanks so much. Okay, should we go to the Q&A now? Because I see that we have quite a few questions. Um, first question comes from Mrs. Dryberg. Um, she's asking, how many rooms are there in the Chateau? Yeah, there are about uh, 100 rooms in the Chateau. Wow, wow. That's a, yeah, that's a huge, uh, huge. And you're in the Chateau right now or are you in a different part of the Chateau? There's a chateau, and on the side of the chateau, we have outbuildings. So we have very big outbuildings. Uh, so if we're just on the chateau, the main building itself, we have 100 rooms. Wow. Wow. And I think you said in your video, Jean Charles, that you guys are preparing to reopen the chateau. Is it open now? Yeah, it is open. Uh, we did open like two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, so we did open the gardens, and now, now the chateau also is open to the public. And we have some uh, maximum numbers of visitors that we can allow every day, every hour. Um, and we hope it's going to be uh, more open in the next uh, future months. Great. We had another great question uh, for you, Anne. Are there any rules as to how to respond if somebody isn't following the rules? So what should we do if someone isn't following proper table uh, manners? How do you respond to that? Well, um, you, you, you stay elegant, you stay um, gracious, because the, the French etiquette has to do with harmony and beauty, so you don't embarrass, you don't uh, put somebody un at ease. So you try just to make it smooth and you, you, you try to arrange things as a hostess, not make it very embarrassing for the, for the person. That's great. Uh, we have a question also. Sarah from Alberta is asking Jean Char, what is it like to grow up in a chateau like Paul de Vicon? Um, and also, does your family all live in the chateau with you? Well, we, my, my dad opened to the public in 1968. So until that date, uh, the family was living inside, inside the main building, inside the chateau. Uh, now we have the visitors coming inside the chateau, so we live, the family lives in the outbuildings. Uh, but as a kid, and uh, it's just a huge playground, so uh, I can't tell you everything we did with my brothers and with my brothers <laughs> in the forest. <laughs> it, it's an it's a endless play, playground. Um, but then, and then when you grow up, you you understand the, the huge responsibilities that you have to, to maintain this uh, monument because this place is really big. And, um, and then we have, we have some kind of a mission for the public to be open and to show the, this part of the French history. Um, but so we, we used to live inside the chateau and it's, uh, it's really a treat, it's really a, unbelievable to be living under this kind of decor um, but then as I said my dad moved us after a few years and so in 1971 he moved us in the outbuilding so the decor the decor was less luxury but, uh, but just the, the whole uh, the whole uh, domain the whole estate is just uh, amazing to be to to live in must have been definitely. And I can I can tell you you can, you you want you you learn to do some bicycle uh, very quickly because the, the 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 grounds are huge. Is it the fastest way to get around? Is yeah. that why? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions that we have, Laura? Or we did have one more. Um, I know we're just a little over time, so maybe the last question here is from Edouard in Montreal asking. What are the future plans for the Chateau? And are you open now? Can we come there public? now? Can we Maybe come visit right now. now, tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> you can come now uh, with pleasure. We'd be happy to welcome you. And uh, we have many events throughout the year. So uh, 
During the summer, we have a very uh, romantic uh, candle lit evenings with 2,000 candles and fire. Oh, That's wow. a holiday. And Beautiful. you can have a dinner outside in the gardens. We have restaurants outside. Wow. In the fall and the winter, we have Christmas decoration uh, coming in the chateau. And we are preparing something very new and very specific for the fall and for next year. In the main Grand Salon, I talked about it on the video, uh, we have a ceiling which is uh, 18 meters high and a very beautiful and very big ceiling. And we, get, we are preparing a video projection on this ceiling. So we're using the modern technology to show some, uh, some movie about La Fontaine, the famous uh, poet that uh, wrote all the uh, fables for this fall because we are celebrating the anniversary uh, this year. And here we, are, we will show the project of the painting, which was supposed to be done by Lebrun, the artist of, uh, of Fouquet, um, with this same technology, the video projection. Wow, that sounds wow. incredible. So many, and, and, and a great opportunity as well to practice some of the manners we learned today, if we were to come to uh, the Chateau to have a meal. Yes. Right? <laughs> Okay, um, I think that's all. Is that, is that all the questions that we have then, Laura? I think so, yeah. I know we're a little over time, so thank you, Jean-Charles and Anne for staying and for all of you who are still in the webinar, thank you for sticking around as well. Yeah, that's so wonderful. We can't thank you enough for um, spending your time with us today uh, and, and for showing us um, all those important manners and, and for also taking us through the Chateau um, and getting to, to have a sneak peek at some of the state rooms. I have to say, the story of your home is incredible. It's just, you know, it's a part of history. Uh, it's a part of Versailles history. <laughs> um, and uh, we definitely hope to be able to come and visit um, one day soon. Uh, any, anything else? Or uh, Thank you again, everyone, for joining. Uh, we really appreciate having you here. Um, and... Uh, we hope to see you in person soon, uh, Jean-Charles and Anne. Uh, take care, everyone. Thank you very much. And I uh, hope to see you soon at Volvicomte and uh, you'll be able to travel soon. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> merci, merci beaucoup. Bye, everyone. Au revoir. Les yeux qui font baisser les miens, un rire qui se perd sur sa bouche, voilà le portrait sans retouche de l'homme auquel j'appartiens. Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle tout bas, je vois la vie en Quelque chose Il est entré dans mon cœur Une part de bonheur Dont je connais la cause C'est lui pour moi, moi pour lui dans la vie Il me l'a dit, l'a juré Amour à plus finir, un grand bonheur qui prend sa place, des ennuis, des chagrins s'effacent, heureux, heureux, en mourir. Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle tout bas, je vois la vie en rose. Il me dit des mots de de tous les jours et ça me fait quelque chose il est entré dans mon cœur, une 
une part de bonheur dont je connais la cause. C'est toi pour moi, moi pour toi, 